This video was brought to you by the ILC. Hello there once again to our trigonometry video series. This time I want to talk to you about radians and degrees, how they're related to each other, and how we can use radians in the unit circle. Let's check it out. So our first question is, what really are radians? Well, radians are just a way to measure the distance around a circle. Now what you might be used to is degrees. That also measures the same thing. We say there are 360 degrees in a circle. Now we can also measure that angle using radians. It's just another unit of measure. Now what we say is that there are 2 times pi radians in a circle. You might have heard the formula at some point. Circumference equals 2 pi r. This is where that 2 pi comes from. It is the angle that takes us from the start point of a circle all the way around and back to where we started. We say that's 2 pi radians. It would stand to reason that half that many degrees, or 180 degrees, is pi radians. What you're going to have to do in trigonometry, oftentimes, is use even smaller angles. For example, 90 degrees, we could divide by 2 again and just say pi over 2. Radians is the same as 90 degrees. What if you have some degrees that are more difficult to change? To change degrees to radians, what you have to do is take your degrees, divide it by 180, and then multiply times pi. You can safely leave a pi on the end. So let's say you had 30 degrees. Well, for 30 degrees, we would say 30 divided by 180 times pi. If you simplify this, 30 divided by 180 gives you 1 sixth pi. You'll oftentimes see this written as pi over 6. If we want to go back from radians to degrees, we just do the opposite. We'll say times 180 over pi. We could cancel out the pi's. This gives us 180 over 6, which is, indeed, 30 degrees. So now you could go back and forth between them. Now radians can come in handy specifically for calculating certain quantities that are related to angles. For example, the first one we'll cover here is arc length. That's the measure of how far along the outer edge of the circle you go based on the angle. And it turns out this is just r times theta, where theta is the angle inside and r is the distance from the center to the outside. You can also find the area of a piece of a circle if you know the angle theta. It turns out the area of a section of a circle is 1 half times theta times r squared, where once again theta is the angle and r squared is the radius, the distance from the center to the outside. So what does this mean for our unit circle? Each of these measures in degrees is also related to some amount in radians. Zero degrees is, of course, still zero. As we said earlier, 90 degrees is the same thing as pi over 2. 180 degrees is the same thing as simply pi. 
and 270 degrees, I will tell you, is 3 pi over 2. And as we said before, 360 is 2 pi. So it stands to reason, since 0 and 360 are the same, then 0 and 2 pi are also the same. We also found that if we use 30 degrees in our formula, we end up with pi over 6. I'll also tell you that at 45 degrees, we end up with pi over 4. And at 60 degrees, we would get pi over 3. These are the fractions that come up the most when you're using the unit circle. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. However, what about the angles in the second quadrant? Let's say we were trying to get an angle at 150 degrees. What we could do to figure this out is get the reference angle. Well, in quadrant two, the reference angle is 180 minus the angle we're looking for. So we'll say 180 minus 150 gives 30 degrees. After that, we can say, well, 180 minus 30 is the same as 150. But 180 is pi, and 30 is pi over 6, and we'll have to subtract them. In order to subtract these, we'll have to get the LCD, and we can see that our LCD is 6, meaning that this pi over 6 is okay, it's already got the LCD, but this pi here is going to need a 6 on the bottom. Let's make a note of that. We can rewrite this as 6 pi over 6. Now we do the subtraction. 6 pi subtract pi just gives us 5 pi over 6. So 150 degrees is simply the same thing as 5 pi over 6. And you could do this with any angle in quadrant 2. Now, here's another example in quadrant 3. Once again, we need to get the reference angle. So let's say we were trying to use 210. In that case, we simply take our angle minus 180, 210 minus 180 once again gives 30. But then, to get our correct angle, we can take our 180 plus the 30, which is pi for the 180 and pi over 6 for the 30. We already know from earlier that pi can just be rewritten as 6 pi over 6. So we'll say 6 pi over 6 plus pi over 6. Well, 6 pi plus pi gives 7 pi over 6. So that 210 can also be represented as 7 pi over 6. You might be able to see that in quadrant 4 we can do exactly the same thing except for remember that in quadrant 4 our reference angle would be 360 minus the angle. So that's an introduction about how we can change degrees into radians and how we can find our angles in radians all along the unit circle. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next episode.